Hey, aloha kako! This is Kenson Kubo again, coming to you from the island of Maui in Hawaii. Well, congratulations! We're, we've come to the last lesson in Discipleship Study Book number three. And this lesson is, it's not what you know. What we're going to look at here is really applying the, uh, what we've learned and how to utilize it in our life so that we can help other people as well as ourselves. And so as we begin, let's, let's go to God in prayer and ask Him to lead us and to bless us. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray a special blessing upon my friend. He's been joining me with all these studies and learning how to do Bible study. And I pray that you would bless them, that you would give them a vision of, of how to disciple others just by using the scriptures. And so I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would lead us and you guide us and you would bless us together as we study in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I want to thank you again for joining with me in this study. I know it, it's sometimes a very difficult thing and it takes a lot of discipline to keep going through these studies, but I, I just pray and hope that God has blessed you because of it. So let's look at the introduction here in our final lesson in this study book. It says, you know the same. It's not what you know. It's what you do with what you know. Isn't that true? It says, there is much wisdom in that statement for unless we apply what we learn, we are not much better off than before we learned it. And having learned the principles and method of Bible study, it is now time to utilize them. There are many ways that Bible study can be applied, and we're going to look at these. But again, this phrase, it's not what you know, it's what you do with what you know. I, I'm sure you know people who know a lot of things, but uh, they don't apply them in, your, in their life. And again, that's foolishness. And so it is with uh, people who, who know how to study the Bible, and, uh, but yet, yet never apply it. And so we're going to look at how different ways that we can apply what we've learned in the first seven lessons. So let's go and let's see what they are. First of all, we can apply it by way of personal study. Every Christian should not only have a personal Bible reading program, but also a personal Bible study regimen. There is nothing quite like diving into the scripture for yourself, researching God's truths in His Word, and discovering His will for your life. Too many Christians depend solely on a teacher to feed them God's Word, limiting their intake of scripture. This can stunt spiritual growth and fruitfulness. So consider the following in order to make personal Bible study a part of your spiritual regimen. Before we go on, you know, I'm not sure how careful you are in what you eat but you also need to be careful in terms of your physical body and you know that if you eat the right kinds of foods and uh, you know you don't starve yourself that your body is going to grow and it's going to grow strong and so it is with uh, the scriptures we've looked you know in the first book of how the scriptures are actually the food for the Christian it, at first it's like spiritual milk and then Paul says it's the meat that helps us to grow in our spirit well, you know, I think a lot of Christians are, are starving. And because of that, they're weak and they're maybe emaciated because they're not getting enough food because they only, they only eat once, once a week when they go to the worship service and then they hear their pastor give that one sermon. And uh, that's not enough. We need to be, you know, if you only ate once a week, you know, for the next several months, what, what kind of health would you have? You'd be very weak and uh, in a way, maybe you might even be dead. But um, same with the scriptures, you know, we need to be eating. Otherwise, we're not going to be growing and growing strong in the Lord. So we need to be feeding ourselves because we can't be always sitting at our pastor's feet. But we need to learn how to open the scriptures and feed ourselves. And now that you've come to this point, you know how to do that. So let's go on. It says, um, we need to commit ourselves to a personal study of God's Word. That's where it starts. We have to say, I, this is important. And I'm going to make time for it. I'm going to commit myself to do it. And then set a goal to study a selected book, character, or topic. Remember the last lesson? That's what we learned. You know, set a goal. I'm going to finish the book of um, Romans, maybe, or the book of Mark. I'm going to study through that entire book. Or I'm going to study the life of Esther or Ruth. Or I'm going to, I'm going to you know, study the topic of prophecy, end time prophecy. Now that's a large topic. It might take you a while to, to do that one, but it would at least be relevant. 
then it'd be in interesting. But you set a goal and uh, keep yourself disciplined to fulfill that goal. And then determine a place and time for your personal Bible study. Don't do it on your back. Don't say, I'm going to do it right before I go to bed when I'm, while I'm lying on my bed. <laughs> I guarantee you, you're not going to make it. Uh, Satan is really good at putting people to sleep while reading the Word of God on their backs. So take, look at this as, as uh, not, I don't, I don't want to say work, because for a lot of people, work is a, is a bad connotation. But look at it as, a, as, as your, you know, the, the, your, the job that you always wanted to do. This is where you're the boss. You're going to determine, you know, what you're going to do. And then you set it up as if it's your own uh, home employment and you're going to do it for yourself. You're not going to pay yourself money, but you're going to get paid by spiritual blessings instead. And so you set it up and you say every day at this time for one hour, you know, set a time limit. Don't say as long as it takes. Just set a time limit for one hour. I'm going to sit and I'm going to study. And when you come to the end of that hour, you might say, you know, I want to go on. So you can continue on, but you don't have to because your time is up. And then keep a journal of your study for future reference as well as to share with others. We've talked about that. And that journal will actually become your study Bible in a way. It's going to be the Bible, you know, in structural diagram form with your observations, with your interpretations, and your applications and your application principles and you can jot also comments and uh, it's going to be an incredible journal it's going to be a, a real reference for your life and it's going to be something that maybe your posterity might pick up one day and say you know uh, dad or mom did this thing and, uh, and they begin to read the things that you you learn from the scriptures and that would motivate them so you know keep a journal of your study and as a record for yourself to and uh, maybe as a record for your family. So that's one, one area. We need to be putting what we learned in practice, start with ourselves. Let's do a personal study. And then let's move on and perhaps a group study. One of the best ways to study the Bible is with others. There are many benefits to this, some of which are listed below. First of all, studying the Bible with others can make Bible study more interesting. Isn't it more interesting to hear and see what other people are discovering, it makes it more interesting. And then studying the Bible in a group can keep us more motivated than if done alone. If you do it by yourself, it'll be very easy to say, well, mañana, you know, I'll do it tomorrow, I'm tired today. But if, if you have a set appointment to meet with a group, then you, you, you more than likely will keep that appointment and you go to that group. Group Bible study enhances our observations, interpretations, and applications as we share and learn from one another. You know, many heads, many minds together can really bring together more observations. And this other person will say, you know, and I, I saw this and I discovered this. And you can learn from what they're finding as well. And it becomes really exciting as you hear how, they, how excited they are and the interpretations that they came to. And now it becomes a very uh, a good thing in, in our own minds to be discussing these things. And what's the... What's the uh, you know, is, is this the right interpretation or maybe is this one? And it's a good mental exercise that will keep our minds active and young as we interact with other people studying the scriptures. And then we come to these different applications. But remember, there is one interpretation, but many applications. So everybody will come to their own. But it's really nice to see what applications people come to. And you can keep each other accountable to fulfill those applications. It says here, studying with others offers a greater protection from erroneous interpretations. You'll have other people able to discern whether your interpretation is on the right track or off on the wrong track. And they'll, they'll hopefully be honest with you and they can tell you. And so it keeps us from being from erroneous interpretations. And finally, studying the Bible with others keeps us accountable to apply what we learn. Because we can keep each other accountable. You know, this kind of Bible study can be incorporated with your personal study because your personal study will be the preparation to come together in a group. So you can see how you can do both of these together and, uh, and actually kill two birds with one stone. You can do both studies and uh, have, the, have, have the group study. So you, don't, you won't be doing two separate studies. It says, when forming a Bible study group, Make sure everyone has learned to implement the method and principles for Bible study. 
Join with Christians with whom you are willing to be accountable toward and whom you are willing to hold accountable. Everyone must be willing to be fair, objective, and humble, willing to receive correction as well as give it. They must be willing to discuss, not argue, the truths of scriptures. Uh, I'm going to add something else, and it will be you know, beneficial if men would meet with men and women with women, because as you come to these applications, it might be beneficial to have just men together because the applications they draw will be something might be so personal that they might not want other women to hear and vice versa too. So you can be more honest and you can share things and you know how men have shared interests and as well as women so that might be more interesting that women will study maybe female characters and men will be male. Women will study topics that would be of interest to them and the male would be for their, them too. So I would keep men with the men and the women with the women. Okay? Now together, decide the type of study to be done, topical, character, or book, and then set a time and place, and enjoy one another's fellowship and contribution. Okay? It's be, be fun. And then you can also apply what you learn uh, by actively listening to lectures and sermons. Sometimes we just sit, sit on the pew and we just turn our minds off, you know, when the, when the sermon comes on. But when you know how to do Bible study, no, now you're going to open up the scriptures, you're going to bring out your notebook, and you're going to, you know, really listen to what the pastor is sharing or the priest is sharing so that now you can study and to see whether what they're saying is of, of God and, of, and biblical. You'll be like the Berean Christians in the book of Acts who went to the scriptures to study to see whether what Paul was saying was from scripture. So act, we can actively listen to lectures and sermons. Use the Bible study principles and method while listening to lectures and sermons. By doing this, you will not only confirm or deny what you are learning, but also gain more from the passage. As you learn to the, as you listen to the sermon, God will be speaking to you more as you see other things there. So listening actively keeps your mind alert to what the speaker is saying. Isn't that true? And then listening actively results in a better understanding of the Bible passage compared to listening passively. Passively is you just you're listening but you're not you know looking at the scriptures, you're not thinking too deeply into it. You're just hearing what the pastor is saying. And maybe you know when I was a pastor uh, I would I would write out my notes and I would have outlines and I would write out the sermon word for word and I would give it out and I never knew you know what impact it had for people. And I suppose a lot of people it just went in this year and it you know, that's the way a lot of people are. And if you ask them the next week, oh, what did Pastor so-and-so talk about last week? I don't know. <laughs> and so if you act, lift, listen actively, you'll remember because you wrote it down and you, you, were, you were studying along with the, the pastor as he gave his sermon. Here's another way to apply it. Train others to study God's Word. Consider teaching others how to study the Bible. As more Christians learn to study the Word for themselves, they will experience the rewards of discovering God's truths and will for their lives, and you will have played an important part in their spiritual growth. Simply use this study book and take them through it step by step by training a small group. You will also see the same benefits listed in the group Bible study section above. Now, so as you have received, you freely give. And that's why I made these studies downloadable, free, so that as you learn it, now you can just print off as many copies as you want, and you can gather around people that would like to learn the same thing, and you can teach them, and you be their teacher. It says here, teaching others to study the Bible helps you to become a better Bible student as you relearn the principles and method of Bible each time you teach it. And then also, well, let me stop there. Isn't that true? If you really want to learn something, then teach about it. Because when you teach it, you really gain an understanding of that subject or that topic. And so that's the best way to really inculcate it, to really put it in our minds and our hearts, is we teach it. And now we review it because uh, we've, we've learned it before. And now every time we teach it, we're reviewing it in our own minds. And it helps us to remember. Also, teaching others helps to fulfill the Great Commission by getting them into the Word. Remember the Great Commission? Make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And so we need to be doing that, to, teaching, to teach people to observe all that He has commanded us to do. 
And what better way than to teach people how to go into the Word on their own for a lifetime of learning. You can also use these principles for creating Bible lessons. If you are asked to teach from the Bible, the Bible study principles and method can be used to develop lessons to share with others. The process of explaining scripture directly from the Bible text is called expository Bible teaching. Two methods are described below, verse by verse and thematic. There is some disagreement on which form of expository teaching is best. There are supporters on both sides, some adamant in their belief. But whichever form you adopt, the primary goal of expository teaching is to explain the meaning and the application of the Word of God in such a clear, accurate, and relevant manner as to cause the hearer to believe and obey its truth. Anything short of this, no matter the form utilized, is unac unacceptable. Now, the, the one thing that is also unacceptable, too, is to make it boring. So make sure when you teach it, that uh, you, you're excited about it, and they can see your passion for studying the Scriptures. Um, when I went to uh, Bible college, my teacher well, actually made it boring, I'm, I'm sorry to say. But it was a year course, and I, oh, I, I, I sat through that course, and uh, it was, it was I, I, I don't know why uh, he taught it in that manner. But it became so laborious, and I felt sorry for uh, my classmates because I know a lot of them, uh, they were uh, nurses, and they were doctors, and they were teachers, and they wanted to go to take this course so that they could become missionaries. They weren't so much interested, interested in teaching the Bible like I was, but they needed it so that their mission board would send them out to be the doctors and engineers and, and uh, doc, uh, nurses overseas. But, you know, I wanted to learn how to... Uh, study the Bible and to, how to teach it. So if I found it boring, I, 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 don't know, I don't know what they must have found it. And I know a lot of them struggled you know, just to pass that class. And so you don't want to do that. You don't want to make it boring. Because studying the Bible is definitely not boring. It's so exciting. And I hope I've been able to communicate my passion of scriptures or studying scriptures to you as we've gone through these lessons. It says, uh, no matter the method used, God's main concern is that we trust Him and utilize all that we have learned to serve Him. As we come to the end of this study book, remember, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Luke 12:48. Uh, that's the same one that, that I had mentioned before. To whom much is given, much is required. And so now you have learned how to study the Scriptures. You're able to even teach others how to study the Scriptures. You've been given much. And you're a, a very, uh, now you're a very trained uh, disciple. And now you can disciple other people. And I hope you choose to do that. I have some uh, excellent resources here. James Braga's book on how to prepare Bible messages. If you're asked to preach in a church, this is an excellent uh, resource. And then we have um, you can copy the worksheets in the back and start excite the exciting journey of discovering hidden treasures from God's Word. Make it a lifelong habit. Well, you, you can do that or just get a very good a notebook and a, a thick one if you can to keep your journals. Or a, a loose leaf binder, uh, a larger one, so that you can keep all of your studies there as well. Okay. Now, I wanted to show you an example of verse-by-verse -verse expository lessons. Verse-by-verse -verse lessons explain each verse in sequence. This ensures a thorough explanation of the individual verses as well as the whole scripture. Um, this, this style is taught by um, uh, the, the Calvary Chapel people and Pastor Chuck Smith and, and all of his pastors teach in this method. If you listen to any of them on the radio, they will go through the entire book starting with the first chapter, first verse, and begin to go all the way through to the final verse and the final chapter, verse by verse, precept upon precept. And that's their uh, philosophy, and it's a really good one. And so you can follow that. Another person that does that is J. Vernon McGee. If you listen to, to him on the radio, he's since gone to be with the Lord, but they still play his tapes. And uh, he does this verse by verse by verse. And so it's, and it's really a blessing because you get to learn uh, the entire book. So that's what this would be, would, would be like. So you want to prayerfully determine your lesson subject, decide which type of study 
book, character, or topical is best for this subject. Do a thorough study of the subject using the principles of Bible study. Keep accurate notes and of your observations, interpretations, applications, etc. Arrange your notes so that you can share them in a clear and logical manner. When sharing your lesson, explain the verses in succession by sharing your interpretations and applications. Be careful of sharing too much and boring your listeners. So you want to edit your material because I'm sure you could speak for hours on the things you discovered. But you want to keep it shorter than that. And then include relevant illustrations or anecdotes to enlighten your listeners to the truths of the text. Here's a note. When teaching God's Word, make sure you are filled with the Spirit of God. Be enthusiastic. This word, again, enthusiastic, the root word is on theos, in God. Theos is God, on is in. So enthusiastic is someone who is in God. And when you are in Christ, you, you should be enthusiastic about His Word and about well, you know, the things that Christ, are, Christ is interested in. One of the worst things you as a Bible teacher can do is to make the Bible boring. And I just mentioned that. Enthusiasm comes from the Greek words in and God. Those who are in God will be enthusiastic. You cannot help but be enthusiastic. So before you get up to teach people how to study the Bible, make sure that you're filled with the Spirit, that not only is God in you, but you're in God, and you're enthusiastic about sharing that topic. And here's a quick example of this passage that we were looking at, Matthew uh, 4.35. And you can read this on your own, but I just wanted to read the beginning. It says, This passage begins at the close of an exhausting day of ministry with Jesus and his disciples in a boat just off the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Because of the crowds, he has been forced to teach from the deck of the boat. And now, at the end of the day, he gives instructions to his disciples that instead of going to the shore where the crowds were, they should go to the other side of the lake, a voyage of about eight miles. And then you can read the rest. But you can see how I introduce the uh, topic and how I go verse by verse, verse 35 and then verse 36, to explain what the scriptures are saying. And so that's verse by verse method. And then in the thematic exposition, expository lesson, thematic lessons seek to organize individual truths in a passage around a central theme. These truths are stated in such a way as to support the central theme of the passage and are organized in a clear and logical manner. Again, you pray prayerfully determine your lesson subject, decide which type of study you want to do, do a thorough study of the subject, keep accurate notes, determine the main theme of the scripture passage that you're studying, determine the truths found in the passage that support the theme and which support your observation and interpretations. These truths again are the application principles, the universal principles that you can apply that transcends culture and transcends time and that people, people can apply anywhere and any time. And make sure they are also dependent upon Scripture or based upon Scripture. Arrange these truths in a clear and logical manner. Present your lesson by explaining these truths by your interpretations. And include illustrations or anecdotes to help make the truths of Scripture relevant. And then share the practical applications and principles that apply. And so basically, the same passage, instead of going verse by verse, now what you're going to do is you're going to share and I don't know how it came about, but in a sermon there's usually three points. So the, the theme is developing faith. And so here's the first principle. Developing faith requires an encounter with our failures. And if you're preaching a sermon and uh, you're teaching a group, this is how you would start. You know, you tell them developing faith requires an encounter with our failures. And then you begin to explain. In God's economy, Things that we consider ourselves strong or experts in often turn out to be the opposite. Here, in this passage, the disciples are given an opportunity to display their expertise as fishermen on the very lake they grew up sailing and fishing on. They were literally in their own backyard. And you can read on after that. But you can see how I develop each of these principles uh, which I've derived from this passage of Scripture. So this would be thematic rather than verse-by-verse verse ex expository preaching. So either way, uh, you're going you're gonna to basically enlighten your audience and your students to what this passage is saying. So the main thing is to do it and not to, not to um, shy away from applying these principles and uh, applying them in your life. 
you know, now that you know these things, uh, you know, you and I are going to be held accountable to apply them and to share them and to pass them on to others. So let's do it. And let's, let's ask God to use our lives to the maximum to share His Word with others. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for my friend for joining me through these studies. And I pray again that they have been a blessing to him and her. And I pray now in Jesus' name, you've given us these things uh, to whom much is given, much is required, and you've given them to us. So now you require us to use them. And I pray for them that they will use it to the utmost, that you would glorify yourself through their lives, that you would open up their hearts and their eyes and their minds to the scriptures, Father, that they would so hunger and so desire to know your word and your truths and your will and your word, that they will discipline themselves to go into your word and to be used as instrument of yours to bring forth your word and, and its, its truth to a greater audience. And they would make disciples, teaching them to observe all that you have commanded us to do. And I thank you, Father, that you are with us even to the end of the age and definitely to the end of our lives. Father, take our life, use us for your glory to teach people your truth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you very much for joining me through this study book. I have prayed that you are, have been blessed by it. And I want to just wish you a warm aloha and God's blessing upon your life. Aloha.